In this video, we're going to be using a program called Sonic Pi to code ourselves a song. Now, today's song, we're going to start fairly simple, is Yankee Doodle. Okay, it's one of those children's classics that you've probably heard before. I'll give you a listen to it so you know what it sounds like. Alrighty, so that's what we're going to be creating today using code. Which sounds quite interesting. Uh, when you get started, you need to open up Sonic Pi first of all. And if there's any writing on your page, just highlight it and delete it. Okay, and if your text is zoomed in quite a fair way, use these size buttons up here to zoom in and out. Okay, you want to have your text a reasonable size, not too big. Okay, I might make mine a little bit bigger so you can see it clearly on your computer screens, but you obviously don't need to copy my size. Okay, the other thing you're going to need to get started today is a copy of all the notes that are used in the song Yankee Doodle. Okay, I've saved these in your account. I simply went on to Google and just searched for these. These are all the different notes that are played throughout the song. And we're going to type these into Sonic Pi to get the computer to play these notes back to us. Okay, so let's start by doing this first line of the song. We want it to play G, G, A, B, G, B, A. Alrighty, so over in Sonic Pi, let's get started today. The way we get Sonic Pi to play a particular note back to us is we simply write the word play, put a space, then a colon, and then the note we want it to play. Alright, if I just go and press run now, you should hear a bit of a ding. That's the G note. Okay, now we play G twice, first of all. Okay, and then we move into playing A. And then we play B, we go back to G, back to B, and then back to A. So that's the first line of our song, playing all those different notes. There will be an issue though if I just run that now. Okay, it's quite loud, and Sonic Pi played each of those notes all at the same time which is not what we want. We want a little break in between each one of those notes. So after the word play on that first line there, just press enter. And what we're going to do is put in a little break. And the way we do that is we just tell the code to sleep for a moment. And we tell it how long we want it to sleep for. This is measured in seconds. So I'm just going to write in 0 0.5. So it's going to sleep for half a second, and then it's going to play the next note. Okay, now we're going to just copy that sleep 0 0.5 by highlighting it and pressing Control C. And I want you to put that in after each note. So control V to paste. At the very end though, I just want you to change it to a one second break. Okay, let's play that now and have a listen. All right, that's the first line of the song sounding good. It's a little bit slow for my liking though, so we can speed things up. Back up the top here, I'm just going to push enter a couple of times. And I'm going to write in use underscore BPM, which stands for beats per minute. And you can just type in a number here to work out how many beats per minute you want this song played back at. I'm going to type in 120. It's going to speed it up quite a bit, so have another listen now. Okay, that's a lot better. So it'll make our testing a bit quicker as well if we speed things up. But that's the first line of the song all done. So I'm going to put in a hashtag here. And just write first line. Now what this is, this is called a comment. Okay, when we put a hashtag in at the start of a line, the computer recognizes that hashtag as a comment. And what that means is it's just plain simple English and it's not actually computer code. So the computer skips over that line and doesn't bother reading it. Okay, so it'll run this line of code, skips the hashtag line and then comes down and runs all of this code down here. Okay, and the reason we use comments it's basically to make our code easier to read. So if there's somebody that doesn't understand code very well or somebody else is reading through your code, these comments will just pop up throughout your code explaining what's going on inside of it. Okay, so get in the habit of using comments to make your code much simpler and easier to read. All right, so we're on to the second line now, which is G, G, A, B, G, F sharp. It's going to be an interesting one, but easy enough to do. All right, so what we do now is just play... I'm going to do G, 
Oops, make sure you get your spacing right here. You always write play and then a space, then a colon, and then a G. Then we're going to play A, play B, we're going to play, play G. Um, after G, we've got F sharp. So to play F sharp, we simply write in F and then do an S to say F sharp. Pretty simple, hey? All right, now that's our second line done. We do need to write in sleep 0.5 after each of those. Okay, so I'm going to just copy the sleep 0.5 from up above and then go down, control V to paste it in after each of these. Whoops. I'm going to shock her here. And even the last one here is going to be a 0.5 sleep. Actually, sorry, no, the last one's a one second sleep. My mistake. All right, so all of them are 0.5. Oh, no, this one here needs to be a one second as well. So make sure those last two notes have a one second sleep after them. Let's just have a listen and make sure that's working. Yeah, so that sounds good. Alrighty, that's the second line done. So I put a hashtag above that and just write second line. So we know that that's the second line of the song. That's the first line above it. Coming in now, we've got the third line. So I'm just going to put a hashtag in now and write the third line. Looking at the third line, there it is there. G, G, A, B, C, B, A. Really straightforward. Now I'm going to copy the word play and the little colon. And I'm going to just paste it in. A few times. Oops. I don't know why it indents itself, but don't worry if it does. Okay, it'll fix itself up in just a moment. Okay, so the notes we want to play here are we've got G, we've got G again, we've got A, we've got B, we've got C5, so we're up an octave there. Uh, we've got B, we've got A. Now, just going back to this C5 here, by default, each of the notes that we play. Uh, on the fourth octave. So we've got G4, A4, B4. But in Sonic Pi, you can save time and you don't need to write that number four in. If you want to go up an octave and play a higher note, you do need to write the number in to let Sonic Pi know that you're going up an octave. Okay, so we're going up to C5 for this one. So it's going to play a higher pitched note. All right, so there are all the notes that we're going to play. And we do need to sleep half a second between most of those. So after the uh, actually, after every single one of them, is going to be half a second. So just copy and paste that in. Like so. That's our third line done. Play it and have a listen. Sweet. Up to the fourth line now. Oh, let's get this comment written in. Fourth line. Now I'm going to copy that play again. And what are we up to? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The notes we're going to be playing this time are G, F sharp, D, E, F sharp again, and then two Gs. Copy that sleep 0.5, we're going to put that in after a few of these. So we're going to sleep 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, actually all the way down until the last two, which are going to be 0.1s. So that'll be 0 0.1, oh sorry, 0 0.1, it'll be 1. So we're going to sleep for 1 second. Okay, now I did the maths before I actually started this tutorial to work out how long I needed to sleep on each of these notes. I'm not just pulling out random numbers from the top of my head. I did work it out before this tutorial to save a little bit of time. Okay, so let's have a listen. Yep, sweet. So that's the first verse basically all done there. Let's get into the fifth line now. Okay, again, I'm just going to copy the plays here. Play, 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 play. I think it's that many. Um, in the fifth line, we've got an E. We've got an E. We've 
got an F sharp. We've got an E. We've got a D. We've got an E. We've got an F sharp. And we've got a G to finish up on. Copy the half a second of sleep. Let's work out what's going to happen here. So, after the first one, it's actually going to be 0 0.75 seconds of sleep. And then the next one's going to be 0 0.25. Just to confuse you a bit there. Then we're back to half a second for the next few. And then on the very last one, it's going to be a one second sleep. So just be careful that you've got the correct sleep times in there. So 0 0.75, 0 0.25, and 1. And the rest of them are 0 0.5. Have a quick listen to the fifth one. Good. All right, sixth one. Uh, catch lock on. All right, let's copy the plays. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to put in a D, an E, a D, a C, a B3. So we're going down an octave there. Okay, just be aware of that finish on a D. Let's copy the sleeps. So we've got after the D 0 0.75 again. After the E we've got 0 0.25. After the D we've got 0 0.5. After the C we've got 0 0.5. After the B3 we've got a one second sleep. And after the D we've got a one second sleep. So again be careful with the sleep times making sure you've got them spot on. I'm not going to preview these anymore. We'll preview them at the end just to make sure it's all working. Under the seventh line now. Okay, we're getting through it. Nearly there. Basically two lines left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on the seventh line, what are we playing? We are playing an E. An F sharp. Back to an E. D, E, F sharp, and a G to finish up on. Sleep times, let's get these right. So after the E, we've got 0.75 again. After the F sharp, 0.25. And we have half a second is in there. All the way down. And we've got our eighth line. Eighth line. Alright, so this is our last one now. Hopefully, we've got this all right. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the eighth line, we're going to be playing E, D, G, F sharp, A, G, finish on a G. Alright, so that looks pretty sweet. We'll get the sleeps in. Got the half second sleep coming in after the E, after the D, after the G. In fact, all the way down until we get to these last couple, which are going to be one second sleeps. So we probably don't even need a sleep at the end, so I'll just get rid of that since that's the final note that we play. Alright, let's have a listen. Beautiful. So you got that looking good. A couple of little things that I like to do at the end is up the top, just put in a comment, so hashtag and write the name of the song. So Yankee Doodle. And what we're going to be doing is changing the instrument used. Rather than that little beep that we've got, I'm going to write use underscore synth underneath my beats per minute line there. Put a space and then a colon, and you've got a list of different synths or sounds you can use to play this song. Okay, the one I'm going to use is a pretty bell. Okay, you can choose whichever one you want, whichever one you think sounds good. If you have a listen now very quickly, you can hear it's changed. Now, one other way to change the sound of your song is to use an effect. Okay, and the way we do that is just put above our first line, we write with 
underscore effects. And you put a space and a colon, and you can see here what all the different effects you can use on your sound files, like playing the guitar and um, using pedals to make different sounds, like distortion pedals or flanges or whatever you want to use. Okay, the one I'm going to use today is the whammy effect. So with effects, use the whammy, and we're going to do that effect on everything below it here. Okay, so you'll notice that everything gets indented. And whenever you want this effect to end, you simply write the word end. So you might just want to play it for the first line and write end just there. So that will play that effect for the first line only, and it will go back to normal on the second line. Let's have a listen. Get the idea. Sounds a bit silly though, just having it on the first line, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to put that end right at the very bottom so it goes onto all of our uh, lines of notes there. So that should have that whammy effect across our entire song now. Let's have a quick listen one last time. Beautiful. So that sounds really good. Finish up, just hit the save disk at the top. No, save button at the top there, sorry. And just give it a name and save that somewhere in your account.